Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Lots to talk about because a lot of respiratory viruses is going, a lot of infections, particularly in the Northeast. But I think the biggest uh, news is China. I've been saying all along that they have managed the pandemic poorly, that the zero COVID possi uh, uh, policy was never going to be uh, effective, and, and they've basically giving up on it. Uh, they realize that the economy can't get going. They can't really enforce zero COVID policy. So uh, while they're not making a big deal about it, to me, the biggest news is that China's sort of given up on that. So we should expect, obviously, a lot of infections that come out of China over the next uh, few months. Uh, the biggest news in the United States is flu. Flu had really took a huge surge after Thanksgiving. You know, like all respiratory viruses, get the family together, multi-generation, everybody gets infected. And that's exactly what happened with the flu. And actually, the CDC thought there were at least 13 million cases, 120,000 hospitalizations, and 7,300 deaths from flu this season. And most of that happened uh, just this past uh, few weeks. Uh, in New York City now, uh, they've once again suggested that people start utilizing masks when in large settings and indoors, not just because of COVID, but because of COVID, flu, and RSV. And the hospitals in the United States are beginning to fill up a lot. So there's been a lot of pressures uh, on hospitals again, but not just from COVID. It's mostly, and I'll show you, uh, it depends on what part of the country you're in, flu and RSV and COVID. One of the interesting things now is because of the problems with the concerns about women getting uh, vaccinated, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of complications from COVID uh, in, in, in terms of uh, delivery and uh, prepartum pre and postpartum problems. So, you know, all the mothers who did not get vaccinated, we were suggesting they do so even during pregnancy, are getting COVID and there's been an, upright, an uptick in the number of complications of, of deliveries uh, because of women who are unvaccinated and now getting COVID. Before I go over the data uh, locally and nationally, I want to review three very important papers on prevalence studies. And the reason I want to review those first is because it gives insight into what's going on. So there was a, a very large prevalence study. Remember, prevalence is the number of people who had been infected. You can study this by looking at antibodies. So this was one and a half million cases, a cross-sectional study from 2020 to early this year, 2022. And the way you can distinguish natural infection is you get an antibody to one part of the virus that's not in the vaccine, it's called the nucleocapsid or the N protein, versus the spike protein where you just, if you've been vaccinated, all you have is the spike protein. So you can take blood from people and tell, did they have uh, uh, natural infection or did they have vaccination plus natural infection? So it's very easy to distinguish those two. So the interesting thing, and this is surprising uh, to me at least, uh, was that the prevalence of, in, of uh, SARS infection causing a conversion, causing uh, a, a change in your antibody, went from 8% in early, uh, uh, in 2020 to 58.2% in February for all age groups considered. That is about three times the number we estimated based on case studies, uh, based on the epidemiology and people saying they were sick. So many, many more people were infected particularly during the Omicron surge. Best example of that is this is an example of the zero prevalence. And you can see the tremendous spike, and this is all age groups, uh, zero to 17, uh, uh, middle age and older, all when Omicron hit many, many, many infections. Uh, and that's a, a real interesting because as we reported, the case numbers we were saying were ones that are reported by symptoms many, many poor people were actually infected. So that's only one study. There was a similar study in um, the Canadian Medical Association, same time frame, 2020 to 22. They noted that the overall seroprevalence, whether it was vaccination or infection, was less than 5% in January of 2021. Then they started the vaccine rollout. Remember, Canada was one of the countries that had a very effective vaccine rollout. But they also had a lot of infections. And by the March of 2022, the zero prevalence was 95%. You know, 95% of the population had evidence of either being vaccinated or infected. But when they looked at it, the same way they, I just mentioned, they could distinguish who got, who converted, zero converted because they got infected versus gotten vaccinated. 60% of the zero conversions were because people actually got infected. 
And it, it was uh, incredibly uh, common in children. 80% of children less than 20 years of age uh, had gotten infected. 60 to 70% of adults aged 20 to 59. And about half that number, so much less than 60 and over. Why? Because they were vaccinated, so they didn't get it and sort of convert that way. And there was one other study, all saying the same thing, an NHANE study, that's the Nutrition Health and Nutrition Ex Examination Survey. This is a CDC population. What you can see here is that the older, the older you were, the less likely you were to have conversion because of the N protein. That, that is the meaning your natural infection. So the older you were, the less likely you were to get natural infection. The older you were, was more likely that you were having antibodies to the S protein. That's vaccination. It all says the same thing. If you got vaccinated, especially in the older crowd, you're much less likely to get infected. If you weren't vaccinated and you got, you got, you got immune because you got infected. So what, I think that's really important. Uh, we talked about herd immunity getting above 90%. I talked a lot for the first year and a half of the pandemic. We hoped, you know, if we could get up to 80, 85%, we would see blunting of the case number. But based on these studies, it suggests that over 90% of the population in the United States and Canada have been either infected or vaccinated, which means a lot of people have some immunity to COVID. And I think that's why we're seeing some, some of the data I'm now gonna show you. So if you look now, uh, here are the case numbers by the CDC. Cases are going up a little bit, not that much. If you look at the heat map in the United States, a little bit more activity in the Midwest and Southwest, North, Northeast had some around New York City. Southeast, very little. In our own uh, state of Texas, very little. If you look at Harris County and our friends in Dimmick County, very low numbers, so very low COVID risk. But I'll show you that's in contrast to flu. If you look at hospitalization nation nationally, hospitalizations are going up, as I mentioned, but not so much due to COVID, Mo more due to flu. Now, if you look at vaccination coverage, and I've shown this before, Southeast has the least amount of vaccination coverage. I mean, I'm sorry, not total vaccination coverage, but those with boosters as well. And less than 12% of the population are, are actually covered with um, a booster. I've, I mentioned the wastewater data continues to go up. This is wastewater, look at orange and red. Those are the, uh, the sites that are showing increase in, in viral burden in communities, that's nationally. And it's being driven by this really remarkable figure, you know, I've shown each of the different waves of, of the virus, COVID virus, alpha, delta, Omicron initially, and now it's this gamish, this whole mixture of many, many different variants. Uh, it's not a single dominant strain anymore. Uh, in our own medical center, the case number is going up a little bit, six and a half percent. Hospitalizations have gone up, but have remained kind of stable the last two weeks at 150. And our wastewater numbers are also going up, as you can see here. So the flu pandemic has really taken off. As I showed you last, uh, last couple of weeks, it started most in the Southeast, where there's not a lot of COVID, there's a lot of flu. And the, and the flu pandemic is way ahead this year compared to previous years. You can see this early spike and a lot of flu, probably one of our worst flu seasons ever. The maroon is really uh, up very high in number as it was blue. That's mostly in the Midwest and Southeast here. And, and the reason that's all important is we're seeing hospitalizations dramatically rise everywhere in the country. In, in the Southeast where COVID is low, most of those admissions are due to flu and RSV. In the Northeast where COVID numbers are going up, it's a mixture of COVID, RSV and flu. But in, remarkably, the mortality rate because of, due to COVID has dropped, and I think it's because there's this broad now national immunity based on e people either having gotten infected or vaccinated. And I would say, I would never have guessed that it was close to 95%. So, I mean, I think that's really a surprise that we're, so many people in this country have, have now been either exposed to the virus or the vaccine. So what can you conclude from all this? Hospitalizations are on the rise for sure. And in the southeast and Texas, it's mostly due to influenza and RSV. In the northeast and the west, it's mostly due to COVID right now. And the overall decrease in severity, I think, of, of the COVID cases is because we're beginning to get broad immunity. Uh, and I think the other thing that it showed is the rate of infection with Omicron was, Omicron was vastly underestimated, probably by a threefold number. 
Now there was one really interesting basic science paper that came out in Nature this week that I think is fun to look at. Based on the number, remember the, the virus gets in through what's the, called the angiotensin converting enzyme uh, receptor, ACE2. And there's drugs that actually modify the number of ACE2 receptors. And so this was a study that looked at whether or not um, FXR, farnesoid X receptor, which can modify the number of ACE2 receptors and therefore impact how much virus gets into a cell. And what they basically did was take uh, organoids from lung, bile ducts, from the liver, and intestine, and showed that if you gave things that stimulated this particular factor, it would stimulate ACE2 receptors and more virus would get in. In contrast, if you inhibited using FXR inhibition, ACE2 numbers went down and fewer cells or uh, fewer cells in number were infected. Now alone, I mean, that's not that big a deal, but what they actually looked was outcomes. So there are a number of patients who had a liver or lung transplant have received some of these inhibitors, and they looked at whether or not they had less uh, complications when they were infected with COVID, and it turns out it correlated. So that means this might be a really effective way by lowering ACE2 numbers, you might actually be able to protect some tissue. So novel findings probably suggest a new route of potential therapies in the future. So very good study and exciting. I want to finish this week with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, to Seth Lerner, professor in Department of Urology, received the Presidential Citation Award from the American Urologic Association for his uh, focus and dedication to clinical trials. Uh, he, he studies the genetics of, of, of bladder cancer. I also want to congratulate all of our health profession students, 85 students who graduated from the PA program, the uh, Doctor of Nursing Practice and Orthotics and Prosthetic program. They were awarded their degrees. They are now can join the healthcare team and we need them. Get to work as fast as you can. And finally, very excited about it. You may have seen a picture I showed you from one of our laboratories. That picture from a cell has now uh, been made into a stamp. So this week, the U.S. Postal Service announced seven new stamps for 2023. Two images from Jason Kirk, Director of the Optical Imaging and Vital Microscopy Corps, were chosen to be part of the Life Magnified category. It's they're great images, and they will now be uh, on stamps, and we'll show you those in a video. So uh, have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.